30 minutes. Only 15 minutes later. Oh, it's a recording. Financial applications involving exponential functions solve problems that involve lo loans and mortgages. It's not just loans and mortgages, it's also uh, money that is uh, invested. So you might invest money by putting it in your piggy bank. So cost of living is affected in part by inflation, which is the rate that prices go up, right? So we know that generally speaking, prices for stuff goes up. You're paying more this year for what you paid for the same stuff last year. Um, if it's 2% per year, then we end up with this compound interest, right? So compound interest is defined over here. The interest earned on both the original amount that was invested and any interest that has accumulated over time. So if you have a savings account, likely you're dealing with compound interest, which means they take the interest on your, everybody knows what interest is, right? Like they pay you, for the use of your money, you leave $1,000 in the bank, they will use that money and they will pay you for the privilege of using it. Like about half or a third of what they get for letting other people use it, but you know. So if you get 3% compound interest per year, here's how it's gonna work. Your starting value, year zero, your starting value is $1,000. You put $1,000 in the bank. At the end of the year, you've got your $1,000 plus 3%. Okay? Now, we don't work with percents when we work with numbers. We have to change it to a decimal. So 3%, 3 divided by 100 is 0 0.03 times 1,000. You'll have $1,030 at the end of that first year. Your original thousand plus three percent of a thousand is thirty dollars in interest. So at year one, your starting value is now one thousand and thirty dollars. You get that original amount plus three percent of the starting amount, the one thousand and thirty, which amounts to one zero six zero, one thousand and sixty dollars and ninety cents. So you start year two with one thousand and sixty dollars and ninety cents. You end year two with your original amount plus. 3% of that amount, or $1,092.73, and so on. Okay, So interest rates are usually expressed as a percent per annum. What's annum? What's an annum? Annual, yeah. So it's, it's from the Latin root, meaning per year. Okay, So you may see it written as slash A. Slash A just means per annum per year, right? Annual annum whatever else comes from that root. So an example, an interest rate of 5% slash A means 5% per year, which is paid if it's an investment or it's charged. If you have a loan, they charge you interest, right? So they're charging you, you getting the use of the money. It's like, hey, I want to borrow a car, and, or I want to borrow a car. I want to buy a car. I need to borrow money to buy the car. They're going to charge you interest. You know, or I have some money that I can invest, I will invest that money, they will pay you interest. Okay, so we need page two. Page two. Uh, creative scatter plot, you could do this reflecting. So this is the compound interest formula. A of n, the amount that you will end up with, or the future value, what it will be worth, <coughs> is equal to P which is the principal, the original amount of money that is invested or borrowed, times 1 plus i, where i is the interest rate. Why does it not say the interest rate in here? And it's the interest rate, so interest rate per compounding period, compounding period. And n is, so it's the interest rate per compounding period, and n is the number of compounding periods. So that's the time over which interest is calculated and paid on a loan or an investment. So if it's compounded annually, that 3% that we were looking at in the last, uh, on the last page, the 3%, that will be paid per year. You're going to earn 3% interest per year. Okay? And you only get it paid once a year. Now, if you guys have an account, your interest could be compounded daily, so every day they're going to work out this is how much interest we're going to give you, and paid out monthly. Okay, so maybe at the end of the month they'll add on an amount of money. So interest rate per compounding period, and then the number of compounding periods. 
So that's on that formula. If the formula is needed, they'll give it to you on the uh, on the diploma, and they'll explain what each of the things mean. Okay, or it's on, if it's on your formula sheet, then they won't explain what stuff is, right? And we haven't really hit the need for the formula sheet, but I'm going to give you one to keep, and that you can write stuff on. So when you get the formula sheet, you'll know this is the sheet that we're going to get on the diploma. These are the formulas. If there's other stuff I need to know, then that's stuff you have to memorize, right? Because it's not on your formula sheet. So calculating the time for an investment to grow to a certain amount. Brittany invested $2,500 in an account that pays 3.5% per annum compounded monthly. The following table gives the value of her investment for the first five months. Right? So she gets 3.5% per year, but they're going to pay that every month. So they're not going to pay 3.5% every month. They're going to pay a smaller amount. So how do we figure that out? Well, we can run an exponential regression. So let's get our calculators out, turn them on, go into stat, edit. So we're going to use the time as the x values are L1, right? It's kind of backwards in the table there. So we've got time 0 through to time 5, right? Five months worth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have the amount. So she started with $2,500. And the next month, so they, they calculate interest and they pay it. So she had $7.29 in interest and ends up with 2507.29. One month after that, she gets another $7 in bit in interest, so she has 2514.60. That's her new starting amount. That earns interest and she ends up with 2521.94. That's her starting amount, she ends up with 2529.29 and then finally 2536.67 at the end of five months. Okay. What we want to do is run an exponential regression and say, okay, so what rate is this growing at, right? It's not growing by three and a half percent. One percent of 2,500 would be 200 and, or sorry, would be $25, right? So three and a half percent would be like $75. Well, she's not getting $75 each month. She's getting some portion of that. So we go to stat, calc, remember exponential regression closer to the bottom, but eventually you'll get there. Um, L1, L2, if you're using a TI-83, you just want to put a Y1 after. Okay, so store regression equation, Y vars function. Okay, so if you've got uh, one of the newer calculators, it should look like this. If you've got one of the older calculators, you want to see EXP reg and then Y1. Okay, and then we hit calculate, and we get the exponential regression. So the 2499.998, that's the starting amount, right? And we're not going to write 2499.998, we're going to write 2500. So it's y is equal to 2500, 1.0029 to the power of x. Okay, so if I ask you, run an exponential regression, give me the equation, that's how you have to write it out, right? And we'll tell you what to round to. So I'd say like round A to the nearest, even if we were rounding to two decimals, it would be 0 .00. And round the B, we're going to go a little more accurately, 1.0029. Now, if you remember, how do I get that? It's growth, right? Because it's greater than 1. So we're going to take... Go away for a second. So we're going to take 1.0029 minus 1, which gives me 0 0.0029. How do I change that to a percent? Multiply by 100, right? So we just move the decimal over to, and we get 0.29%. So wait a second, I thought we were getting 3.5%. But here's the deal. She's getting 3.5% per year, but it's compounded monthly. So we have to take 3.5% point, hang on, let's just do this. So 3.5% divided by 100, change it to a decimal. 
So she's getting 0 0.035 per year, but she's getting it monthly, so we divide by 12. 0 0.0029, etc. right? 167. If we went into y equals 1.0029165 and so on, right? So 1.002916 and here, 0 0.002916, right? So what we have to do is we have to take this and adjust it. So her equation, 2,500, that's the principal or starting amount. Principal or starting amount. This amount here is, let's go to here, 1 plus 0 0.035 the annual rate, right, 3.5%, converted to a decimal, 0 0.035, and then since it's monthly, we're going to divide by 10. <coughs> and then the N value here, or the X value, right, that will be the number of months. So this will be the interest rate, interest rate, per month. Okay, So she's getting 0 0.035 divided by 12, which works out to this 0 0.0029, which is the monthly rate. Okay, So she's getting 3.5% a year, but since they're paying monthly, they don't give her 3.5% each month, they give her 1 12th of the interest rate. You divide by 12, right? There's 12 months in a year. Okay, so determine the compound interest rate that models this. We got this 0 0.0029, right? One, sorry, we got 1.0029. Say, hey, that's growth. What do I do? I subtract one from it. it gives me 0 0.0029. That's a decimal. I want to make it a percent. We multiply by 100, and we get 0.29%. Multiply that by 12, you get 3.5%, right? So if we took the number that number there uh, and multiplied it by 12, so times 12 is just going to take us back, 0 0.035, that's a decimal, multiply it by 100, change it to a percent, there's our 3.5%. Okay. Uh, Alright, that was what, page 2? So let's take a look at page 3. Uh, interest rate, 3.5% compounded monthly. Change from a percent to a decimal. Divide by 12 because there are 12 months in a year. Okay? Really? Uh, scatter plot looks... Oh, we never looked at the actual... Uh, thing here, right? So let's go into a window, let's take a look. So we're going to start x min at zero, right? You don't start at negative because x is the number of months, right? And let's say we do this for a year. And we know that she started with, so we can leave the scale at one. She started with $2,500, so I could start at zero and go up to, uh, let's say, $3,000 by, I don't know, 500s maybe. And we can hit graph. Okay, so the problem with starting at zero is you don't really see much of a curve, right? Because the money is just staying around 2,500. So two things I want to do. I want to turn on the stat plot so we can actually see the points. So second function y equals, stat plot, turn it on. And then the second thing we'll do is we'll say, well, don't start at, uh, don't start at zero for your y's. Start at $2,400. And maybe go to twenty-seven hundred dollars. Let's go by fifties now. Now we can see, hey, it really looks like a curve, right? It's starting to curve upwards. Ah, it looks like a straight line. Right? Right? It is an exponential. It really, is a curve, right? We can make it look more like a curve just by narrowing in, okay? And then you'd start to see a little bit more of a curve. So there's our values. We have a pretty good fit. Right? They told us to do an exponential equation. We've got a good fit. We can extrapolate, which means go beyond the five months. How much money does she have in 10 months? Second calc value, put in a 10. 
got 2573.88. Okay, we would round to the nearest cent unless they said nearest dollar. And at what point does she reach $2,600? So then we put in 2,600, hit graph, and say uh, further out, right? I got to extend my window. Oops, I want window. Got to extend the window beyond 12 months. Let's make it, uh, let's say, 15. Is that good enough? It's 24, 25, 26, yeah, so that should be good enough. When do we reach 2,600? Second count intersect. I'm just going to go up to the straight line because it's easier to move along that line. Stop. Damn it. I don't know why it's really red. It's, it's gone road. <laughs> Um, how long did it take? I, I, I got to kill this now. Die. All right. So what what did we get? Thirteen point. Sorry. Thirteen point seven. Thirteen point seven five. Or thirteen point five. Thirteen point five. So we wouldn't say thirteen months. We would say you're gonna have to go fourteen months to get at least twenty six hundred dollars, right? If we asked for the nearest tenth, then you would round it to the nearest tenth, say, take about 13 and a half months or whatever, right? But they're not going to pay interest in a half month, right? They'll wait till the end of the month. So you'll have to wait to 14 months to get your interest. All right, that's page three, page four. Uh, use my CAC. So we've done regression equations, right? <coughs> we extrapolated, we found out in which month. Will it be worth uh, $2,600? And we found out, page four, where's the box? And we found out that uh, in so many months, it'll be worth so much money, right? So we have those, uh, those values, and we have that model. So that's a model. Now we want to model depreciation with an exponential function. So Gina bought a camera for her studio two years ago. Her accountant told her that starting from the beginning of the second year, she can claim a depreciation, right? It's in green. What's depreciation? Decrease in value. Pretty much anything you buy is going to depreciate. It's going to decrease in value, right? So the phone you spend a thousand bucks on is not worth a thousand bucks anymore, right? So it's depreciated. It's gone down in value. Uh, so this depreciation, so what it is, Canada Revenue allows you, if you're setting up a business, you have to buy stuff to run the business, right? So Gina has bought a camera for her studio. She runs a photography business. But starting from the beginning of the second year, she can claim a depreciation rate of 20% for the camera as a business expense, right? It's worth less at each year. At the beginning of the second year, her camera was worth $2,000. How long in years from the time of purchase will it take for the camera to be worth only $200? So what we want to do is we want to set up an exponential regression that models the depreciation, right? So if it loses 20% of its value, that's going down, right? So we're going to write something like y equals. Okay? <coughs> so at the beginning of the second year, it was worth $2,000. It's going down, so this number is going to be what? Less than 1, greater than 1? Less than 1. OK, so what is it? 0. Point, so think of it this way. What's 20% of $200? Okay, what's 10% of 2,000? Two, two, sorry, 2, what's 10% of 2,000? 200. What's 20% of 2,000? 400. It's going to lose $400 of value. What's it going to be worth? So it was worth $2,000, lost $400. It's worth $1,600, right? If I put 0 0.2 in here, we're going to say it's worth $400. So what do I want to put in here? So I want to get $1,600, right, when I multiply this once. So it's going to be 0 0.8, right? If it loses 20% of its value, what you need to think of, what does it retain? So 
So how much of its value does it retain? 80%. Right? You walk into the store, you see the thing you want to buy, it's 20% off. What are you paying? I'm going to pay 80% of what it costs originally, right? Because that's what's left after I take 20% off. So this is our equation. That's our model. 2,000 times 0 0.8 to the x. Okay. Now, it's really the beginning of the second year, right? So if we put a 1 in there, right, we don't get to depreciate, right? We get to start at the second year. So we're going to have to go like x minus 1. So in, at year 2, I'll get 1 depreciation. In year 3, I'll have gotten 2 of these depreciations. Okay, so we can model this. How long will it take for the camera to be worth only two hundred dollars? Yeah, let's try and bring back our calculator. All right, so it's all nicely clear. So we're going to y equals so two thousand thousand bracket point eight. Right? Not 0 0.2. 0 0.2 would say it's gone down by eighty percent. There's only twenty percent of its value left. Okay, to the power of bracket, we're going to go x minus 1 because it doesn't start depreciating in year 1, it starts in year 2. Enter. Now, if I want to see values, I can do a couple of things, right? I can go second function table. Say, okay, how do we end up with $2,500? Oh, it's working backwards, right? So the way that it's saying it really is, right, like we're skipping a year where we're saying you don't start. So it's a, yeah, if you did it every year, then initially it'd be worth 2,500 and then you'd be worth 80%. So now it's worth 2,000 in year one, year two, it's 1,600 and so on. When is it worth 200? So we're just going to scroll down the list and say, when do we get to 200? Aha, uh -huh. so it's going to be after 12 years, right? So 11 years, it's still worth $215 to get below 200. Uh, when is it worth 200? Well, somewhere between 11 and 12. Okay, how are we going to model that? Well, we can go set a window and say, okay, we're going to go from 0 to, so we know we got to go at about 12 years, let's say 15 years by 1. Uh, our Y min, 0, was worth 2,000 to begin with. We'll put in the 2,500 and let's say go by 100. Okay, now, we know it's not worth 2,500 in year 0. But if we use this model where we have continuous depreciation going, it's as if it were worth 2,500 and then it became worth 2,000 and then so on. Went down. Uh, go to y equals. We've got that in there. Now, y2, I want it to be worth $200. Okay, so now we can graph. Nice curve, right? You're going from Q2 to Q1. But we're really just in quadrant one, right? If we go into Q2, we're basically saying negative time. Okay, we don't want that. Okay, where? Okay, I don't know if this is going to work this time. Intersect. And we'll try and slowly move one painful step at a time. I don't want it to turn red and keep going. Okay, so 11.3. Okay, be 11.3 years. How long will it take? How long in years from the time of purchase? Oops. So let's go and see what they said. So what do we want? Page six. You could make a chart. That's a huge waste of time. Right? It's better to do a little model there, right? Uh, my camera will be worth 200 at the end of the 12th year after purchase, right? So we had 11 point. We have to go up to the next higher year. So 12 years. Uh, page seven. Seven. Seven of nine. Uh, the exponential regression function. So really, it, it modeled it as 2,500, right? Um, we said 2,000 times 0 0.8 to the x minus 1 because it started in year 2. They're saying 2,500 times 0.08x. It's as if you did get that depreciation in the first year. And the big thing, right, <clears throat> you lose 20% of your value. You retain 80% of the value, right? And then you change 80% to a decimal 0 0.8, and that's what you use as the base, right? 
So we have appreciation, which is an increase in value. So Ali inherited a set of rare silver coins from his great grandfather. An appraiser told Ali the coins are currently worth a thousand and their appreciation rate will likely be 2.5% per annum. Ali, who wanted something that cost a thousand bucks, just sold them. Forget it. So when, how long will it take in years from the time of appraisal for the coins to be worth 2,000? Okay, so we would set that up. Y equals, we're dealing with appreciation. Your starting value is 1,000. What goes in here? It's going to delete everything. All right, I'm just going to clear this out. Clear. Okay, so your starting value is 1,000. Bracket. They're going up by 2.5% a year. What do we put in for the base? So it's 1 plus 2.5 divided by 100, okay. or 1.025, right? So it's appreciating. It's got to be greater than 1. It's appreciating by 2.5% a year. So we can go just, okay, take 1 plus, add on the percent, 2.5. But it's got to be a decimal, so we go divided by 100. Okay, to the power of x, that's our appreciation, right? I want it to be worth $2,000, so we'll go down here and say I want it to be worth $2,000. We'll set our window. Okay, let's start off with 0 to 15. I don't know if that's big enough. Uh, y min, okay, so 1,000, let's go $900. Want it to be worth $2,000, let's go to $2,100. By hundreds, a graph. You can see they, they kind of start off slow. It looks pretty linear, but you can sort of see it's starting to curve. And we are nowhere within the number of years we need to be. So let's uh, let's double that to maybe 30. Set that to 5. And you graph that again. Now it's starting to look a little bit more like a curve, right? It's curving a little tiny bit. And yeah, we're good, right? See the intersection. Second, calc, intersect. Okay, so we're gonna very slowly move along here. That's painful. I can move along the straight line. One step at a time. Actually, I'm just gonna hit enter three times. It'll go find it. Okay, 28.07. So it's going to be a little over 28 years, right? A little over 28 years. And then the coins will basically have doubled in value. Paying off a loan. Go unblue. Calculate the time to pay off a loan. Jessica borrowed $7,500 from the bank, or a bank to buy new equipment for her band. The bank is charging interest at a rate of 3.6% per annum. Connie, she's lucky. That's a pretty good interest rate for borrowing money. It's likely going to be higher than that. 3.6% per annum compounded monthly. Her monthly loan payment is $400. Okay. So she borrowed $7,500. If there was no interest being charged, then we just go 7,500 divided by 400 and figure out how long it took to pay off, right? But they're charging interest. So determine how long to the nearest month it will take Jessica to pay off the loan. The loan manager gave Jessica the following equation. It's like, seriously? Like, he didn't just say, it's going to take you this long. He said, Jessica, I know that you were good at math, so here's an equation. Figure it out for yourself. At which point she'd say, I'm going to a different bank. <laughs> All right, but this is just some artificial math question. It's like, you almost do a disservice to the math when you set up stuff like this. But Okay, so here's the deal. We get 1.003 to the power of negative n, so to the power of negative x. Okay, there's a negative there. Not easy to see, but it's negative x. And the other side is 0.94375. 
Okay, first, we need kind of an estimate as to how long it's going to take to pay off the loan. Okay, so we'll quit out of that. Just say, all right, so she borrowed $7,500. She's paying $400 a month. If there were no interest, it would take 18.75 months, right? So we know we're probably looking in about the two-year time frame, 24 months. So we'll go to the window, say, zero, you know what, zero to 30, good enough, by fives. Okay, we want to end up with 0.94375, so I'm going to go from 0.9 to 1, right? I want to keep a pretty tight, right? Just at 0.95 around there. Scale, say, by 0.1. Graph that. Okay, so there's the curve, 1.003 to the negative x. Here comes the point nine four three seven five. This intersection will be the number of months. Okay, intersect. Oh, I think I can move. Don't turn red. Don't turn red. Okay, intersect nineteen point <coughs> three. Now with the loan, the way it's going to work is. It's a little bit more than 19 months. So in the 19th month, when she went to make the payment, instead of being $400, they would just charge $400 and a little bit more money, right? Just to cover the remaining balance. Okay. So we're going to use, what do we got? 19.326. So 19.33. So the question is, all right, so she makes payments of $400 a month for 19.33 months. So she paid a total of $7,732. But how much did she borrow? $7,500. So if we subtract $7,500, then what was the cost for her to borrow the money? $232. That cost is called interest, right? So in order to borrow $7,500, she had to pay back $7,732. The cost of borrowing how much interest she paid is $232, okay? And that's what this is asking. How much interest will Jessica pay on the loan? So we figured it out, and it's going to be $232, and that will be on page 8. Okay, plug it in, work it out, right? We know how to do that. $230.77. All right, they went a little bit more. They went 19.326, so use the actual value. All right, we could use the actual value, right? 400 times x. Because remember, the value is going to be stored in x. Minus 7,500, which is the amount she borrowed, $230.77. There you go. So I will pay. She will pay $230.77. We will not add a sound and light package. But we will go to page 9. Key ideas. Financial institutions charge compound interest on all loans and pay compound interest on some investments. Which is why they make piles of money and we don't see it. Compound interest is calculated at regular intervals by first adding any accumulated interest to the principal. Right? So the amount you started with, you then add on that interest so you're earning interest on your interest. When money earns or is charged compound interest, an exponential function can be used to model the situation. Need to know. Exponential function that models compound interest is A of N is P times 1 plus I to the N, where A represents the future value. What's it going to be worth in the future? P represents principal. What's it worth now? I is the interest rate per compounding period. So actually, we're going to do a couple of questions where we'll play with the compounding periods. And N represents the number of compounding periods. Compounding periods are usually daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, and the following table shows how to do it. If you are getting paid daily interest, then you're getting paid 365 times per year. Unless it's a leap year, then it's 366, right? But for our purposes, we'll just use 365. In order to work out the interest rate per compounding period, you're going to have to take the annual rate. If it's a percent, you've got to change it to a decimal, divide by 100, and then divide by 365. If it's weekly, you divide by 52. 
If it's semi-monthly, that would be like twice a month. You divide by 24. If it's monthly, that's 12 times per year. Divide by 12. Quarterly, there are four quarters in a year. Divide by four. Semi-annually, twice a year. Divide by two. Annually, once a year. Divide by one, or just don't do anything, right? It just is what it is. So here, I'm going to give you an example. This type of question you're going to get. Okay, so Jim uh, invests $5,000 at 7.2% per annum. He's getting 7.2% per year, compounded monthly. How much will he have at the end of five years? So we've got to work out some numbers here. So we are going to use the formula. That moved, this didn't. <laughs> We're going to use the formula A is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. I'm not even sure if that's on your formula sheet. No, 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 no. Okay. So if they're going to ask you a compound, they're going to have to give you the formula and explain to you what each of the stuff is, right? So you say, okay, I want to work out A, and I know that he started with $5,000. The interest rate is 7.2%. Hang on, let's just move this down here. So A is equal to $5,000, 1 plus... 7.2% converted to a decimal is 0 0.072. It's monthly, so I need to divide that by 12. Okay. So when the compounding period is anything but annual, you need to adjust the interest rate right? by dividing it by how many times a year are you going to be getting paid. So he's going to get paid interest each month. That's 12 times a year. So he gets 7.2%, 0 0.072 divided by 12. Just enter it this way. That way you're not worried about rounding and stuff like that. Now, in five years, how many compounding periods are there? So how many months in five years? 60. So what we do is we say it's five years, but it's times 12. So you're going to take the interest rate and divide it by how often you get paid interest, and you're going to take the number of years and multiply it by how often you get paid interest. So that's what we have to work out. So in our calculator, we just enter it exactly as we see it. So let's clear this. So we've got 5,000 bracket 1 plus 0 0.07. 2 divided by 12, bracket, okay. you enter it like that, to the power of 5 times 12. And then depending on your calculator, you might need to put that in brackets. So I'll just put that in brackets so that we have it there. So bracket 5 times 12. And we hit enter. So $7,158.94. $7,158.94. Now, if this were a numeric response question, you only have four blanks that you can fill in. So it would be to the nearest dollar, and you go 7159. Right, just round it to the nearest dollar. And you say $7,159. OK, so you got to know the terms. Annually, quarterly, monthly, I wouldn't worry about semi-monthly, like weekly and uh, daily, and just know how many days in a year, how many weeks in a year, how many months in a year, how many quarters in a year. Um, T 
take your interest rate, divide it by the number of times per year that it's going to be compounded, and take the number of years and just say, so you're saying I'm getting this much, this much interest per month, and in five years, there are five times 12 or 60 months. Okay, and then you'll be able to work it out. So on the quiz, basically gonna ask that and you're gonna have to, you know, do this and do this. Okay, questions of which you will see in 6.5, right? Asking you to do that. So a little bit of practice goes a long way.